Hi guys, I'm Bobshi, and in this video I'm going to show you how to do character collider rollback for performance shooting. Now this is something I was asked by Valentin Stefden on YouTube. He told me to look into character collider rollback and collider rollback is not something I've ever looked into. I didn't know what it was and I've managed to make something I think works in an hour. So the general idea of it is since the performance shoot video takes into account the time difference, well so should the collision and this makes great sense. So let's just say that here we have a player guy over here in black and then we have a bullet as well now if this character is moving and the bullet is flying well if things aren't lining up completely the collisions aren't actually gonna work so what we got to take into account is let's say that this character is currently moving this direction this means there'll be a copy of him of well in the past he will have been here 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 you get the idea in the past he will have been moving this direction now the same thing actually goes for the bullet so it might at this time be in this position which means that maybe on his screen it didn't actually hit him but the thing is if we take the bullet's previous positions into account it went past his previous position in time as well now each little dot will be seen as one tick one stored position in the past and so if we go one two three four five dots back we will also in the player's position have to go one two three four five back and that means that if this red dot hits this black line well the bullet in the past would have hit the player and this is one way to check collisions in the past to also make those really performant. So this way we would still not need the bullet to be a network object. This will also be fully server side. So this is built on the same performance shoot script that I did in the video. So if you haven't watched that video, go watch it now. It's also the one on screen and there will be a link at the top right of the YouTube video. Now some things are however a little bit different. So most of it looks the same, but instead of actually moving it, moving the bullet in this script, I will rather be having the bullet move itself in order to store its previous positions as well. So as you'll see here, normally on this line and on this line down here we just added it to our own list in order to move it but instead what i do now is i call the bullet script which i'm spawning so you can see bullet prefab is the bullet script i'm now spawning that and keeping a reference to it and then running bullet.initialize where i feed it the direction the speed it should be going at i give it an id which is just calculated zero between nine and nine 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 now this is basically not 100 percent secure but odds are one in a million that it's going to hit the same id as another bullet that's currently active and i give it the id of the guy who shoots the bullet as well which i just give by own ID or you can see you can also do it by local connection client ID but I'd rather have these be the same and as you can see I do this for both the local player that shoots it and also all the observers that also fires it so all the information especially the bullet ID and the owner ID really needs to line up for this to work so if we're going to the bullet you can see initialize just stores all of this data that's been sent through stores the owner identification as well and also puts it into its own static bullet script which keeps track of all the bullets that have been spawned now here's where the interesting part comes in you can see we also have a past state uh, list which which just consists of a custom class that's called state. Now this state only just stores position. This could store everything from scale, rotation, and so on. Anything you basically want to keep track of in the past, it could store that, and then it adds it. Now, I just want to say really quickly, you'll notice this isn't the normal walkthrough where I show you the coding. That's because this level of coding is a bit more advanced and the video would be easily 30 minutes long. Even though I did make this in an hour's time, that was actually a really smooth process. So if I had to make it again, it would take a while to show you, and I'd rather just showcase exactly what goes on in logic. If you want to see how it works and just want to copy the scripts the scripts are in the description and later on in the video towards the end i'll be showing how it actually works or what's actually going on and i've also made custom gizmos for both the player and the bullets to actually show what's going on now as you can see here i'm subscribing to the on tick method notice the bullet is a mono behavior not a network behavior because we still don't want to spawn it that's not very performant so i'm just using the instance finder for the server to subscribe to the on tick method which it then uses to keep track of all the past states remove the past states that we don't want in this case i'm using the time manager tick rate figure out for how long do I want to keep information about state? Now, in this case, I just chose that I want it over a second. Uh, you know, that would require a ping of a thousand in order to miss out. So that should probably be more than fine. You could probably also have this for a ping of 500. That should be just fine as well. And yeah, then you'll see it'll go through every player that we have. So this player collision rollback is another script that's on the player. It will go through each player on the map. Remember, we're on the server right now. Then it will just check the distance, make sure it's not too large. Because if the distance is too large, there's no point in checking whether we're colliding consistently. So I'd rather just skip out of that player. And then we'll tell him to do a collision check with this bullet if the player is close enough. And we also have a destroy bullet function, which is called from the player. I'll show you that in a bit as well. And that's really it. And then I've just made the gizmos 
to actually showcase the bullets flying properly. Now, if we go into the player, you can see, first of all, I have this dictionary, which is just type integer to the type of this class. And that's just a list of all our players, so we can easily, easily reference him. He also has this past states. We also keep track of his capsule collider in order to get data from it. And that's that data that we store here, which we use for the collision check. Now, this is where things become a bit more advanced because there's no really solid way of checking whether a point is inside of, of a capsule. So I've made my own math for that, which is yeah why it's a little bit too much to just showcase in a single video. So in case, you, again, you want to copy it, it should work just fine. If you have a different type of collider, you can do that. Type of sphere collider would honestly be the easiest, but you know, for a capsule, it's not that difficult. And we really just figure out whether we are actually hitting. And if we are hitting, which is why I've made this little note for you saying a collision has occurred, we call the destroy bullet, which is an op service RPC. The reason why we can do that is because this also happens, you know, still from the server. Remember the bullet calls it from the server. And then it will just call destroy bullet if we've actually hit a player. And I've also just made sure that we can't hit ourselves. That's what the owner ID part was for. Uh, and that's really it. And then I've just made the gizmos to be able to actually draw out the player's spherical shape properly or uh, capsule shape so let me just go showcase you exactly how it looks and how it works and to be honest it's really hard to test if it works properly but i think in theory everything that i've done should work so please do let me know if there's something i've missed if i've messed up i'll of course let you know so check the top of the description if something's wrong i'll put an edit there but you can see that the shooting the collision everything works properly but if I now take this out, you'll see the gizmos immediately. And so I've made it so this is the oldest position that's stored, which means that position that you're seeing moving is one full second old. There are positions all the way in between, which is what you see with the bullets. As soon as I fire them, you'll see every single position of the bullet. And if that encounters an old position which matches up or aligns with the bullet, it'll work. So if I go and just simulate a ping of six to 700, like so, you'll see the ping display up here going really high. That's okay, good. Yeah, it shouldn't be going that high. <laughs> okay, so even if I fire this, you'll see on the server end things you can see it grabbed it in the past because we have this high ping the only issue with this system is the fact that you know since we are spawning it or having the player spawn the bullet locally in order to have it feel the best that technically does mean that if the server doesn't see the bullet immediately you know if the server's ping for some reason would be too high which it should never be but if it is you can see the bullet first spawns all the way here so it'll only start actually storing the positions all the way from here now there are ways around this but i didn't want to go too deep with this i just spent like an hour's time that technically means that if you know the players within this sort of i guess two units within the player with such a high ping it actually won't detect the collision because the bullets are starting being tracked way too late again we should never see such a high ping this is an extreme case but it's good to know that that is an issue that'll be there but other than that you can see even with a high ping the collision detection is working just fine and i really just hope that this was interesting to you i thought it was a super cool system thank you very much valentin step then for the uh, for the idea it was really cool looking into i've never made anything like it and yeah it was a fun way to sort of challenge my own skills to see if i could do it as well and i hope that you guys find this helpful so if you actually use the performance shooting tutorial i actually recommend implementing this as well because it'll make the experience a lot smoother for everyone and for that sake make it more fair for everyone since the detection is fully now server-sided so yeah have fun everyone happy coding and i just hope that you have a wonderful day